Hi there! So, while in the early days of computer gaming, text-based games were very popular, they largely fell out of popularity in the English-speaking world. In Japan, however, they remained popular. And in the late 2000s, a flood of translated Japanese visual novels started arriving in the English-speaking world, one of which being Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. But where did this unnerving roomescape visual novel come from? Well, let us find out as we journey through 999's development history. Also, major spoilers ahead, you've been warned. It was the late 2000s, and game developer Kotaro Uchikoshi was working as a freelance writer for a choose-your-own-adventure-style mobile game adaption of the classic visual novel Banshee's Last Cry. Now, producer Jiro Ishii had long been a fan of Uchikoshi's work, and since Banshee's Last Cry had been developed by Chunsoft, where Ishii worked, he decided this would be the perfect opportunity to reach out to Uchikoshi. And so, in early 2007, Uchikoshi received an invitation from Ishii asking him to join Chunsoft, and Uchikoshi agreed. Now, Ishii had wanted Uchikoshi to help develop the visual novel 428 Shibuya Scramble, but unfortunately Uchikoshi joined Chunsoft too late for that. They decided to change plans and have Uchikoshi work on an original game instead. So, what would the game be? Well, Uchikoshi was best at developing visual novels, but he had come across a lot of Escape the Room games online, which he found very interesting. But the games never answered the question of why the characters had to escape from the room in the first place, or even why they were trapped there. Uchikoshi decided his new game would fuse the concepts of a visual novel and an escape room game, giving Room Escape a much needed storyline. And so, Uchikoshi decided on the basic premise of there are a number of doors with nothing written on them, and you split into several groups and move forward. Depending on how you split up the group, the ending of the story changes. Now, the setting of this game would be some kind of mysterious building. Spooky. However, when Uchikoshi showed this idea to his bosses, they told him, It's hard for us to visualise this story. We can't relate to it, and it doesn't catch our hearts. In response to this, Uchikoshi moved the game's setting to the Titanic, somewhere almost everyone knows about, which is easy to visualise. Now, although Uchikoshi liked the idea of an escape game, he realised it was a weak concept on its own. To add some drama, he decided he wanted to have the characters bargain amongst themselves in some way. Since it had been decided that there would be nine main characters, he came up with the idea of assigning each of them a different number. To enter one of the doors, they would need to form teams whose numbers added up to the number written on the door. Right. Now the basic premise had been decided on, Uchikoshi got to work writing the story. He decided to base it on the question, where do mankind's inspirations come from? He started doing a lot of research into the topic, and eventually came across English biochemist Rupert Sheldrake's theory of a morphogenetic field. Why did all the world's glycerin suddenly start crystallising? When you make rats clear a maze, why is it that with each new generation, the clear time gets shorter? Why is it that as more people know an answer to a question, the chance of other people knowing it goes up? These were the questions Sheldrake's theory sought to answer, and this theory of morphogenetic fields became the basis of 999's storyline. Okay, now he had a theme, Uchikoshi started thinking of a twist. You see, the way Uchikoshi develops the stories for his games is first deciding on some kind of twist, and then working backwards to form a story. So, what kind of twist could he use? Well, he knew that the game was going to be developed for the Nintendo DS, which had two screens. Two screens! That was it. He could have dialogue take place on one screen, and the inner monologue take place on the other screen. Then, near the end, he would reveal that it wasn't really a monologue, but actually the thoughts of a completely different character. That would sure catch players off guard. Right, now to come up with said characters. It had been decided that there would be nine main characters to fit with the nonary theme, and because of this, Uchikoshi decided to base the characters on the Enneagram of personality, which is a Greek concept listing nine different personality types. There was the Achiever, who became Ace, the Investigator, who became Snake, the Enthusiast, who became Santa, the Loyalist, who became Clover, the Challenger, who became Junpei, the Peacemaker, who became June, the Helper, who became Seven, the Individualist, who became Lotus, and the Reformer, who became the Ninth Man. 
Now, Uchikoshi wanted these characters to be instantly understandable from when you first meet them, so he asked character designer Kinu Nishimura to make them all look like stereotypes of their personalities. However, Uchikoshi intended for each character to be more than they first appeared. You see, in school he was taught that you should use stereotypes to make it easy for people to understand your characters, but then use those stereotypes and people's expectations to catch them by surprise to get your message across. That motivated Uchikoshi to give each character hidden sides to them, hidden backstories to discover as you play. Okay, now there was a setting, a story, characters, what was missing? Oh yeah, the actual room escape part of the game. For this, Chansoft collaborated with ORG, a Japanese company that helps developers out with their games. The way the process worked was that Uchikoshi would present a rough guideline for how the puzzles should be, and he participated in brainstorming, but ORG came up with most of the individual details. Uchikoshi was very adamant that the story should come first, and then the puzzles. The puzzles had to match the themes of the story. Right, now it was time to compose the music. Uchikoshi chose composer Shinji Hosue as the composer, because he had worked on a large variety of different genres and styles. Hosue actually found composing 999's soundtrack to be one of the easiest projects he had worked on, because Uchikoshi gave him incredibly detailed reference documents to work from. After submitting a few test tracks to Uchikoshi, it was smooth sailing. And so, on December the 10th, 2009, 999 was released. Sadly, it didn't sell very well. 28,000 copies in 2009, and a further 12,000 the following year. However, it did review well, so it was decided that there should be an English translation. Surprisingly, this English version was much more of a hit, with strong sales and review scores, leading to a sequel being released in 2012. However, this again sold poorly, and Chunsoft decided to cancel the series. However, just when it looked like all hope was lost, the series was saved! Who by? The fans. A campaign was started online to raise awareness for the games, and to convince Chunsoft to continue the series. And, lo and behold, in 2016, the third and final entry in the series was released, concluding the Zero Escape saga. Well done, fans. You did good. Hi there, thanks for watching! So normally I cover happy, light-hearted Nintendo games on this channel, but this time I wanted to do a 180 and talk about what is basically the complete opposite of that. I'll probably mostly stick with more upbeat stuff in the future since that's mostly what I enjoy, but I am working on a Danganronpa video so stay tuned for that. Cool cool, see ya, bye!